Hello, and welcome back once again to the Luminary Life Update podcast. The whoop! Uh, it is currently March 11th, uh, 2020, obviously, uh, 3.46 a.m., it's kind of late in the late in the night f- night frame night phase whatever you want to fucking call it kind of late in the the schedule so you know it might not even be enough time i might have to speed through this a little before people start waking up around 6 but anyway uh hey look at that we're here uh the last episode was recorded on january 24th <laughs> so we flat out just missed february you know and we're already almost halfway through march that's not really cool what the fuck happened well uh <laughs> It's time to ta- it's time to timestamp the ever loving fuck out of this video. Uh, there's a little thing going on right now called the coronavirus, and uh, I guess that's just how I want to kind of start the episode by talking about it just a little bit, not going full explanatory black pill because it's possible some of the information isn't correct by now, and it's possible some of it won't be correct in a month or three months or a year, you know, whatever. So anyway. Uh, the coronavirus is a thing. At this point, it's big enough that it will end up in the history books, whether you're listening to this uh, now, quote-unquote, or in the future. So you'll be aware of what the coronavirus was, the 2020 COVID-19 uh, debacle. I Now, I have been following it um, for the past couple months while it's been in China, thanks to my good buddy, Mr. Medicare, uh Jim. You know, great guy, been following his streams about it, just kind of going into vivid detail about all the terrible things that have happened in regards to how they're quarantining people and also what the disease does. And, you know, now, well, definitely by now, uh, it's hit almost every country, and, you know, I live in Washington State in America, and believe it or not, actually, (laughs) um... Washington State, I believe, was the first state of America to not only have a case, but also to have the, the, but also to have the first death, uh, first, I should say, first United States death. Obviously, people have already been dying from the coronavirus in China, because it took like a month and a half for it to hit America. But anyway, um, yeah, so I live in Washington. I don't need to really say where, but just I am in the, the area, so... Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's just had me a little bummed out, been a little freaked out about the whole thing. Um, as a 23-year-old, I think I'll be pretty fine. I'm betting on the fact I won't die. If I get it, I'll just have a mild case where you just kind of feel like shit for a week because uh, I can deal with that. You know, I can grapple with feeling terrible for a week. If it means I don't die at 23, that's something I'm kind of scared about, if I'm being completely honest. This is my podcast to be completely transparent and talk about what's going on. And I've already kind of had, about a week ago, I already kind of had this, this uh, not breakdown, but just this kind of uh, crystallizing moment where I just kind of had this moment of like, damn, I could, it's possible I'm going to fucking die before I hit 24, and, you know, all the kind of regrets and, you know, thoughts that come along with that, I I genuinely, you know, for about an hour, I kind of had, I didn't cry, I didn't, like, spaz out, I just kind of, like, just kind of, like, calmly just kind of, like, reflected on things and said, well, you know, hey, how much time do I have left, and, you know, what's going to happen, and I don't know, man, it's got me messed up, I end up spending a lot of time I've been pretty good about it the past few days, but, um, in, I I think on February 29th, the mayor of Washington was like, yeah, we're going into a state of emergency for the state. And, uh, you know, it might, it might even be too little too late because it is a really long incubation period. So you might not even know you have it until 14 days after you already have it, you know? Um, and you can spread it to people while you're asymptomatic. So, it can have an incubation period of 14 to 24 days and you can spread it to people while you don't even know you have it. So (sighs) suffice to say, by the time cases are popping up, we, we already messed up, you know, two weeks ago. So, (sighs) you know, again, I don't want to go too far into it, but, uh, it's a very scary situation right now. And, um, it's had its effects on the world in general, and it will continue to, and I don't really know, because it's so spreadable, I don't really know uh, what the world will look like a year from now. I'm kind of holding out to the end of March to kind of see what's, what the world will look like at that point, but 
oh, yeah, you know, it's just kind of, it's just kind of fucking spooky stuff. And so, um, I've just been distracted by that in February as well as just, you know, not really having the, uh, I haven't had the proper sleep schedule to do it because I like to be up at this kind of time. Again, I've said it before. Um, and you know, it also takes, it takes being up at the right time and also it takes three things on a given night to record a podcast. I need to feel not like I'm behind on stuff, which I got pretty behind in February. Let me tell you. I need to feel like I'm not behind on stuff too. My sleep schedule needs to be proper so that I'm like, I still feel active from one to like 5 a.m. That's, that's like the prime period for me. Um, and I, and the third thing is I just need to be in the mood, you know, cause I might say, well, I, I have the time to do it, but do I even feel like it? Do I want to do it? Today was kind of an iffy day today. I'm not even really sure I want to do it, but I feel guilty that I've waited so long. Uh, and I missed February, uh, to do this. So, you know, but yeah, you know, the coronavirus thing is a pretty big deal. You know, it's not, it's, it's not at the absolute level of buy 400 rolls of toilet paper and, uh, you know, fucking 70, uh, things of hand sanitizer. Some people are fucking stupid. You know, panic buying just means that less people are going to get those same things. Somebody made a really good point that like, if you buy 80 things of hand sanitizer, that's like, you know, like at least 20 other people that won't get that, that might get the virus and then might give you the virus. So, you know, you're not really helping yourself if that's what you're planning on fucking doing. I've already paused a few times throughout this just because I ate some spicy food. I've been getting a little into a specific kind of like spicy chicken at a, at a deli in a grocery store nearby that I just am addicted to and uh, like any spicy food. And I'm not even going to pretend to uh, assume that it's anything actually spicy by anyone's spicy standards because I'm not much of a spicy guy, but it's spicy for me. And, you know, that's all that matters, right? But it's also spicy enough that it, it you know, it, it fucks with my, my guts a little, you know? So I get those weird kind of shallow burps that don't have much air to them and just kind of feel weird. So those are always very spooky because they kind of feel like in the same uh, sector as nausea, you know? But anyway, that's besides the point. Coronavirus thing, not really cool, especially because I already had my like month basically stint of feeling really sick back in January. So I'm uh really not fucking down about that, you know? Anyway, we've spent seven minutes already talking about the coronavirus. That's not cool. So that's kind of the IRL update and also where uh where I've been kind of. Again, as always, if you're somehow wondering where the fuck I am. Uh, you know, it's not impossible to find my Discord server. It's the only thing linked in the channel description. So uh, there should be nobody wondering where the hell the next one is because I'm very easy to come into contact with. So, yeah. Anyway, <sighs> let's get into the number count. We've got a lot of things lined up for uh, this podcast, and we'll just see how many we actually do. <laughs> so, all right. Comparing here from January to March here, because we just should skip over February, right? <clears throat> Games, 337 to 336. That's cool. <laughs> um, games wishlisted, 566 to 564. Uh, anime to watch, 734 to 740. Manga to read from 101 to 109. And books to read is the same. Uh, eight to eight and the total total has gone from 1746 to 1757 now here's a really fun fact the overall number from february 1st to march 1st has only gone up one the total total went up one between february and march 1st which is fucking sick right normally it goes up like 10 or 20 so if i can you know st if i can stall that number just them just more and more while i'm digging through things that'll be really good but anyway <sighs> yeah, so that's where the numbers are, you know? Now, what did I finish? Um, <laughs> I'm, all, you know, I'm going to be honest. I'm already kind of starting to feel like I'm not really into this. Let me take a, a swig of something here. Okay, so first thing I finished, uh, Yakuza Kiwami 2. Now, it's been a while. That was back on uh, January 21st. <laughs> so, um... You know, it's been it's been kind of a while. 
Um, I just remember being really happy with uh, the Dragon Engine that it's now running on, that uh, Yakuza 6 onward, all the uh, Ryuga Gotoku Studio games, I don't know if that's how you probably pronounce it, but anyway, all those games were on the Dragon Engine now, really cool, really slick, uh, I like that a lot of stuff just flies around during combat, um, I'm just really boiling down my thoughts, um, I really liked it, I liked it more than Kiwami 1 in general, um, but I had like a lot of issues with the story, a lot of things that were like really hyped up and then just didn't really deliver, and I don't know if that was the... I don't know if, um, <clears throat> I know for a fact that they were things in the original game, right? Because it's such a faithful recreation. Even the cutscenes are made like shot for shot. So my only real thought about a lot of those story issues, and I made like a notepad document listing off so many fucking problems that I don't really want to unleash upon anybody because I don't want people to slap my face on it. And I'm willing to concede a lot of them, but yeah, just a lot of things that I'm like, uh, why? But, um, I like that it tried a lot more. It tried to do a lot more than the first game did, you know, because Zero's fucking great, but that's because it's their sixth Yakuza game they made, the sixth main one, you know, in between five and six. So, you know, Zero's fucking great on a story perspective. And then Kiwami 1 and 2 are both kind of, whew, but Kiwami 2 tried a lot more, and I respect that, and I appreciate it, and I can see how, you know, when the series was first coming out, to compare uh, Yakuza 1 to Yakuza 2, it would be fucking mind-blowing, you'd be like, holy shit, I can't believe how much better this game is, <sighs> but, um, yeah, you know, just a, a few story problems, and the thing, okay, here's where I was going with this, the thing that I kept thinking about, kind of during it, was, for the sake of it's recreation, you know, it's Yakuza Kiwami, Kiwami means extreme, so it's technically not just a straight remaster, there, it, was, it wasn't marketed, as far as I know, as a straight remaster, because they could have just done Yakuza Remastered, right, which is what they did for uh, Yakuza 3, 4, and 5, they're slightly altered ports of the uh, PS3 games for PS4, so they're the Yakuza Remastered Collection. They're not fully remade from the ground up like Kiwami 1 and 2 are, but um, in the recreation process of 2, I just kept thinking about all these little problems with the story that would have really benefited from if they tried to patch those up in a remake, but then, you know, the other immediate thought is, well, it's a remake, so you want it to be as faithful as possible, so it really... There are some games that will change and update things as they remake them, and I I can't name any examples off the top of my head, but I, I know it's happened before, so I'm, you know, it's just a, there's an argument either way, right? It should either be, well, you should update things and make it better, or you should keep it the same, you know? And one of the biggest disappointments of a remaster is, of course, Dark Souls Remastered, where some things look better, some things look worse, uh, they didn't fix Vamos's fucking voice, they still made it just, they just cleaned it up, but it's still distorted as fuck for no fucking reason, I mean, it's clearly just like, that's the effect they wanted for the character, right, but it's still fucking stupid, but, and they added, like, a couple things, you can change covenants from the bonfire instead of going to the covenant leaders, but you still have the, you still suffer the downside of betraying a covenant, so it's like, well, you made it, you streamlined it, but you didn't fully streamline it, because it's still a bad thing to do, um, and they just, it just like, it's really weird because, again, with a remaster and a remake or whatever the fuck, you have two options. You can either keep it as faithful as you can fucking try to maintain that original experience, which is definitely worthy to be preserved and definitely a worthy pursuit, even if there's parts of the game that suck. Like, I don't, I don't fault Kiwami 2 for having little issues with the story that I didn't like because that was the original game. So, like good on you for repeating it, you know, it doesn't matter, it, my issue was with the original game, not really with Kiwami 2, you know, though Kiwami 2 technically stands by itself on those issues as well, you know, but then the other, like, sheer side of a remaster is updating it, and trying to polish off every little, like, kind of dull part of the game, you know, and 
I know I'm just totally getting sidetracked, but I really like this point of comparison with Dark Souls Remastered, because Dark Souls Remastered didn't do either. It didn't completely maintain the original game, because they added like three or four things in. They added the password system, they added the quick covenant change thing, and they added an entire bonfire somewhere else, and they let you... Uh, pop multiple items at once and donate multiple items at once to Covenant Leaders, and I think probably like a couple other things. But the fact is, it's not the original game anymore because they added those features, but that's all they added. They didn't fix, like, there's some clearly unfinished parts of the game, like Lost Isolith and uh, just like... <laughs> Just, like, the entire second half of the game, frankly, right? And no one, no one here, here? What am I talking about? No one is gonna fault them for not, quote-unquote, finishing the game, but it's like, if you wanted to maintain the original game, you should have left it exactly how it was. Don't go halfway and be like, oh, well, we added a couple little nice things. You know, they didn't really, like, they didn't change and update the mechanics to reflect the later game's better implementation of them. You know, you didn't get... Uh, like, the upgrade system in Dark Souls 1 is so shitty compared to 2 and 3, and it's so much more complicated and, and annoying, but again, you can make the argument that, like, well, that's the original game, and it's like, if it's the original game, then why'd we, why'd we get the fucking password system? That, that takes away the difficulty of summoning people, which was part of the original game. You know, just all that shit. It's just so, it's so confusing. Your remaster slash remake slash whatever, the re-whatever, you know, either make it as absolutely one-to-one -one, uh, deadly accurate of a recreation of the original as possible with updated graphics and like you know revitalized cutscenes or whatever or like remake the game and polish up the the mechanics and make it just as deadly modernized and like perfect as you can keeping the soul of the game intact but like making it shinier on all the fronts you know so we can talk about that a little later, I guess, with something down the line. But yeah, Kiwami 2, uh, I like that it did a lot more than uh, Kiwami 1 did in the story department. And I'm really interested to see where uh, the story goes from there. Um, yeah, I'm not going to pick up the remastered collection yet because I'm really curious to see more Yakuza games come to PC. I do have my, my PS4 now because I bought... Death Stranding, and, you know, uh, f four months later, uh, Death Stranding is still the only PS4 game I own. <laughs> How about that for buying a console for one game? <laughs> but, yeah, so, it feels good knowing that with the collection out, I do, like, right now, personally have the ability to play through the entire Yakuza storyline, except for 7, right? But it, that's not even out in English yet, so that's fine. But, yeah, so... Something for me to think about. Um, but I'm not going to pick it up yet because I want to see if uh, things will come out. And because Kiwami 1 and 2 and 0 are the ones already out on PC, I think it makes the most sense to put the remastered collection out next. And then 5, or I mean, and then 6. And then maybe Judgment, maybe Lost Paradise. I'd really love to play Lost Paradise, honestly, since I'm way more into Fist of the North Star after getting into the fucking gotcha game. <laughs> but anyway... Yeah, Kiwami 2, uh, it's a bit of a slapper. Zero, I think, is still the best, but I like uh, Kiwami 2 a lot as well. <sighs> so next up, um, this isn't even really like something I finished so much as... Uh... <laughs> oh my. Uh, I would like to correct the record about 12 minutes ago. I finished Yakuza Kiwami 2 on February 3rd. Uh, it wasn't January 21st. January 21st is when I finished the first Kiwami, and I finished Kiwami 2 on February 3rd. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, um, <clears throat> again, here's something that I didn't finish, but it's something that happened. Uh, I went to see Dweezil Zappa on the Hot Rats 50th Anniversary Tour. Dweezil Zappa being the son of Frank Zappa because Frank is dead. He died from cancer in 93 before I was even born. I uh, love that. Love finding out my f my fucking heroes are dead before I was even aware of them, uh, such as George Carlin and Bill Hicks. That's really cool. But anyway, <clears throat> so they uh, Dweezil took up the mantle, and he's he's I'm not gonna say he made it his life's work, but he got 
so good at guitar, even better than his dad at this point, and he just goes around with a with a really fucking awesome band and covers a bunch of his dad's music, and it's fucking cool, you know, why not? So, that was really cool to see. I got tickets for Christmas from my mom, so that was cool. I took my friend who I'd been playing Zap albums for in the background for the past, like, couple months, <clears throat> and that was cool. I don't know how much he, he loved it, but he did have some moments where his mind was blown because they were like, you know, everybody up there would just be a fucking monster at their instruments. You know, you got so many different keyboards going on. You got uh, fucking saxophone, flute, obviously guitars, bass, drums, just so much just riffing, awesome shit. I don't even know how to explain it. They played Hot Rats in its entirety, uh, Zappa's seminal uh, jazz fusion album, possibly the first jazz fusion album, if it wasn't for... Actually, it came out on the exact same day that King Crimson's Into the Court of the Crimson King came out, which is like, can you name a better single day for music ever? You know, how many... Can you name a day where three incredible masterpiece albums came out? Three influential, seminal masterpiece albums came out on one day. I don't know if you can. Maybe somewhere in the 70s or 80s you could probably list, like, oh, three really good metal albums came out. But I don't know, man. One day. We're not talking the same month, same year. We're talking one day. So people are like, man, this decade was a really good decade for music. Or this year was really good for music. But it's like, damn, same day. Holy fuck, you know? Um, so they played through Hot Rats in its entirety, and then they played a set list of a bunch of different songs. Um, I'm still only, like, maybe a third of the way through Zappa's discography, so I only knew about half the songs. Um, but it was cool, kind of getting a preview of a bunch of other songs, and it kind of gave me a little bit of a header as to which albums I should check out next. So that was cool. <sighs> it was a fun time. I was glad I went. Concerts are really fucking cool, and it's it's kind of, uh, I'm not going to say it's indescribable, but it's indispensable to, if you like music, to occasionally go to a concert to see a live band play music, because it just makes it all the more real, the fact that like these crazy skilled people exist. And whether or not you're into complicated music or not, I think even people with a more simple music palette, and I'm not trying to be insulting, but people who have a more simple music palette cherish and, you know, attribute skill to the people that perform the music they like you know even if you're just even if you're just into pop punk or you know some kind of quote-unquote you know simpler music genre you're probably like damn that guitar is fucking great even if you know anybody in metal could play circles around them that's not that's not what i'm that's not my point but it is a reality but yeah so go to concerts if a band you really like is playing near you just go fucking go and have a great time realize you're going to be surrounded by people who like at the very least maybe even love the thing you do and god we all know how hard it is to find people that love the specific things we do you know so that was a pretty sick concert dweezil zappa <clears throat> so then i did a little meme uh to start uh on February 18th, I finished, quote-unquote, booting up the decade. I don't know if I talked about this, but I had a plan for the start of this year, just because it's the start of the decade, um, to kind of start it strong, which included cleaning up and vacuuming and everything, um, the game room and my bedroom, and washing my bed sheets, you know, just going the whole nine yards, Clearing, clearing, uh, fucking, uh, washing all my laundry, all that shit, you know, and just kind of getting a really good start on the decade, you know, <laughs> and I did most of that, uh, somewhat quickly, I cleaned my room, and then I did all this other stuff, and then literally the last thing I had left was to, uh, vacuum my room, I finished vacuuming and carpet cleaning, uh, the game room, and I finished... Everything else, except I had to vacuum my room, and I was just too lazy to fucking uh, head on up there and fucking do it. But uh, my dad was just like, one day he was just vacuuming upstairs, and he was just like, yeah, I vacuumed your room for you. I was like, oh, okay. So just kind of unceremoniously, uh, it was done, just like that. So boom, I did it. <laughs> you know, 
somebody did the last step for me, and I was like, oh, okay, all right, well, uh, I guess I got that done. But yeah, it was uh, it was really cool, just kind of making sure I started, um, making sure I started everything with with a fucking slapper, you know. Um, I realized I, I started deleting my notes, uh, even though I'm supposed to save a copy on Discord uh, that I can use for the timestamp later. So let me just uh, fiddle with this a little. <laughs> Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, I pressed Control Z and only brought back a couple things, and I'm like, but I had like two other things listed there. I need those. <clears throat> anyway, right? Booted up the decade. Felt pretty good. I don't know if um, everybody at some point has just kind of had the urge to just go on like a full cleaning rampage or, you know, just to organize everything. So I figured, what better time than the start of a new decade? You know, 2020. <laughs> but anyway, it's going to be 101 years before the number, you know, the uh, will be two pairs of the same digits. Ugh. You know, anyway, let me say anyway, like seven more times, right? Uh, next up, The Division 2. Now, what's up with that? I didn't mention The Division 2. I haven't mentioned it at all. What what the fuck's the deal with that? I think maybe I did. I'm not sure. Um... Let's see what day this was. <laughs> uh, February 23rd, I finished The Division 2. Now, The Division 2, um, for a promotional thing for an expansion coming out early this month, they actually, on Uplay and every uh, console platform, they sold The Division 2, the entire base game and everything, for $3. That's right, three fucking dollars. I've never seen... You know, at least in the modern era, I've, I've never seen a... Let me explain that, actually, because that still probably doesn't sound very uh, crazy. But anyway, I've never seen a AAA game sold a full, you know, not some fucking starter pack bullshit with, like, Rainbow Six Siege or a uh, For Honor. You know, this is Ubisoft. They could have done some starter pack sh stupid bullshit. They didn't. It's the full fucking game for $3, you know? Never seen a full AAA game sold for $3 before, and by that, I meant that, like, you know, it's only, like, a year old, you know? You can, obviously... The, the immediate counter-argument is, well, huh, have you ever been on Steam? There are games from eight years ago that are AAA that get sold for $3, and I'm like, yeah, but that's fucking eight years ago. You know, anyway, so I don't really have that much to say about The Division except for except to talk about technical issues. Anyway, God, I just love that anyway button, and now my nose is itchy, and my guts are grumbly from spicy food, and... It's always such a train wreck, isn't it? <laughs> God damn. Anyway. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, it didn't quite, like, nail me. Like, the atmosphere didn't quite hit me as hard and, like, envelop me as much as the first game did. Because the first game is set in the winter and the second game is set in the spring. So everything's green and kind of overgrown. Which is its own aesthetic. But the, the, the smothering snow and cold of the Division 1 was really cool. Um, let me think here. <laughs> Mechanically, uh, the Division 2 was a lot tighter than the first game. However, we're immediately going to jump in to talk about the expansion here. Man, those uh, those shallow burps after spicy food. I don't know if anybody listening to this can relate, but it's it's a real thing, and you're like, wow, that's kind of spooky. Anyway, <laughs> Jesus. Um, Division 2, better mechanically than the first game. They knew what the fuck they were doing, and I think for the first time ever, I saw a looter shooter in that vein of, you know, Destiny and Anthem and The Division. For the first time ever, I believe The Division 2 actually stuck the landing. You know, it seems almost impossible for a looter shooter to launch a sequel successfully, but as far as I could tell, The Division 2 did it. You know, and I'm not even talking from the perspective of just now playing it a year later. I mean, like, I was still subscribed to the subreddit when it came out, even though um, I didn't care enough to buy it when it came out. It was just going to be in the back of my mind. And hearing it was on sale for $3, that was finally my, you know, point to jump in on. Um, so they made a lot of things better, and I don't want to really go into the details of things because there's so many things I could talk about. I kind of had a, I almost had like a spasm in my brain when I was like checking out every, all the new stuff, trying to make sense of it all. Um, 
but I will say, uh, there's a bunch of great things, and then with the expansion that just came out, uh, Warlords of New York, which came out a week ago, um, they changed a bunch of things for even better, and then they added a bunch of shitty things as well. So, again, I don't want to go into specifics, but, like, somehow the game was going fucking great, and everybody was going was getting excited for Warlords of New York because the game has an end game. You know, that seems to be, like, the problem that people have with looter shooters at launch, but it has an end game, you know, and it's still there. Admittedly, all the content is still there and it's still good. It's just that, like, the gameplay and, like, the looting aspect is just slightly shittier than it was before the expansion came out. Like, overall, there's really good changes and really bad changes. Overall, it's slightly shittier than it was before the expansion came out, which has people mad, and now the game's in kind of a bad state, and it sucks to see that, because I was really kind of, uh, I was really kind of uh, getting down with it. Um, but I have to say, I have technical issues with it. Now, PC gaming, in general, is a really nebulous topic where, you know, there's like, well, maybe you're running different parts, maybe these parts can handle this better, maybe they, maybe these parts just fundamentally can't run this, or they can't process this, or maybe you'll run the exact same rigs on, on the same game, and for some reason Machine A gets 20 more frames than Machine B does, you know? It's ridiculous, and I, that's one of the things I fucking despise about it for the longest time. Uh, I didn't really care about PC gaming because I was tired of when I was a kid having a really shitty old family computer, and then when I wanted to play a game on it, uh, I would, you know, I'd buy it from the store, and then I'd install it, and then it wouldn't run at all. I'm like, well, what the fuck? I have a computer. Run, run the fucking game, you know? Um, which I think as a child is perfectly understandable. You know, now it's like, well, obviously because computers have different parts in them, but to me the idea that there were different kinds of, like, parts in computers, that it, it just kind of was like, why? So, you know, being a... Con I didn't really hate PC gaming, it's just that I found it really frustrating and annoying that you'd have to purposely build a powerful computer and that at some point you will need to make either a new computer or keep updating parts to like stay playing new games so as a console player for the most part growing up uh it was so much easier because at least you know when you buy a game for a console it's gonna fucking work on that console at least and at the very least if it doesn't work very well you're getting the exact same experience everybody else is that's playing it on that console you know so that's cool. Anyway, The Division 2, uh, I should first state, um, The Division 1 didn't really have any problems with it at all. There was one setting I had to turn off because it was taking too much, I think it was like something like hardware acceleration related, uh, because it was taking too many resources from my graphics card in general, so that if I wanted to watch YouTube videos at the same time, like while I was running around com uh, clearing side missions or collecting things, um, my videos would stutter and, like, buffer, and I'm like, well, that's not cool. I want to be able to, like, watch my videos while I'm doing it, because I have two screens, right? Flick that off, uh, no problems with the Division 1, and now I can watch YouTube videos just fine. Great. Thank you. You know, run it at, like, high settings, maybe very high settings. Looks great. Good-looking game. Uh, glad to play it. Division 2, same engine, this the Snowdrop engine, which I believe the recent Ghost Recon games, uh, Wildlands and Breakpoint, are also on, uh, some reason, I can run The Division 2 just fine. However, there's two big problems with it. Two real big fucking problems with The Division 2 running on my computer. Uh, the first one is somewhat, somewhat, uh, frequent? I don't know, frequent isn't the right term. Somewhat common. That's what I'm looking for. And that is that it, for some fucking reason, it will, it will crank the fuck out of your CPU and take all of the resources and hit and make it smash into that 100% CPU usage, which, uh, if you're playing the game by itself, you know, if you're just, if you've got one screen, you know, you're just playing the game, that'll be perfectly fine, except you'll get micro stutters, which will be really annoying after enough time, but if you have multiple screens, and you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna tab out and do something else, your computer just grinds to a fucking halt, like, it suddenly feels like that shitty old family computer, you know, while you're running this fucking game, because your CPU is capped out, now, what caused this, is it too beefy for my computer, no, I don't know what the fuck it is. Somehow, my screen, my laptop's main screen, which is where I play my games, even though my second screen is slightly bigger, you know, I use that for watching stuff, and I use my main screen for playing stuff, it goes to 120 hertz. So, reasonably, the most frames I ever want is 120 frames, you know? Here's the thing. 
on the settings I was running, I was getting about 90 to 100 frames typically on the Division 2. Totally understandable. My computer's from 2017. Starting to get a little old. You know, I'm, I'm starting to, you know, accept the fact. Well, it's not even starting to accept. It's just that, like, yes, bl just bluntly, my computer will not survive, like, the next three years. It's got maybe two more years in it before it's going to start fucking running into issues, which is fine. You know, I'll, I'm going to build a desktop at some point and be like, oh, anyway, <sighs> but I'd be running it at 90 to 100 frames, you know, not even hitting 120 frames, which is like my cap, and it would be cranking out 100% CPU, so all you do is you set a frame rate limit, like anywhere, and suddenly it doesn't do that anymore, because <clears throat> I know there's a thing where, and I'm not even going to say that every game does this, I'm just saying I've seen it happen before, where if a game is running without v-sync it'll literally crank as many frames out as it can which will like make it run like shit until you put a some kind of frame limit on it um but again like i wasn't even hitting like what my like f display uh limit would be you know so yeah it was really weird so i just cranked the uh you put the frame limiter on, like, down to 60, which is, like, my bare minimum, right? Um, but, yeah, lock it to 60. No problems anymore. Now you're back down to, like, 60% CPU usage. Wowie. Thanks. You know, it's been a year. Again, I'm not buying it. I didn't buy it at launch. I'm not playing it at launch. It came out a year ago. Still has this issue. Uh, supposedly, there were updates to alleviate it a bit. But, obviously, me and other people who have complained about it as I've done research... Uh, still have problems with it, so thanks Ubisoft, how about you just, I don't know, fix that fucking issue, I don't know what the deal is, the other thing is, is the other second, uh, the other second, as in one of those two words, pick your favorite, uh, issue, is that, if I, if I leave my computer on long enough, apparently, you know, I'm, I'm either going to sound like, I'm either going to be speaking the gospel to people and they'll be like, oh my God, wow, oh, I've never heard of that. Or I'll sound like a total fucking retard. But anyway, apparently if you, if I leave my computer on long enough, when I want to launch the division two, it eats up all of my remaining memory because there isn't enough there because it's just been strewn about by being on for so long and doing all these different things. So if I want to run the division two flawlessly, now I know that I have to restart my computer before launching it. And then, you know, it'll be fine for like the next 10 hours or, you know, whatever. If I want to play the division two for an entire day, it'll, it'll be fine, you know, but it's just annoying because a restart is only, you know, maybe what, like 20 seconds for my computer, maybe in total to get from hitting the restart button to like back to doing stuff, you know, but, a, but like in this fast paced society that we live in, um, I'm not even making a joke. I'm literally just saying that, like, I just feel the need to always be doing something. So if I do that, it's like, fuck, I instantly got to resume this YouTube video on my phone, you know, <sighs> but, um, yeah, so that's annoying. So it, once I've kind of put that piece together, you know, eventually I did finish the story before I totally figured out the restart thing. And I just had to deal with a ton of micro stuttering along with my mouse having, uh, my mouse starting to fucking crap out on me. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but anyway, you know, there's like side content they added after the base game through updates that I still need to do and I need to do the expansion. I just started it as of the as of this video and you can't go back to DC until you finish it because now you're in New York and I knew that before I went into it. I knew that like a week ago and I'm just like, oh. I just want to finish it so I can like stop feeling like I'm partially done with it because I kind of want to do like everything in the division two, right? But the technical issues just really, ooh, ah, just really fucking rubbed me the wrong way. Ultimately, I really wanted to love it and I still kind of do, but fuck, I, oh, it's so annoying that I had to deal with that shit for so fucking long. Oh, it's not cool when you run the game at high settings normally and the game looks great. And then it's cranking out 100% CPU and then you turn everything literally to the lowest possible and it's still cranking out 100% CPU. Like, that's just fucking maddening. It might... Now that I know that that wasn't the case, it's the frame limiter that's important there. Um, you know, 
I still haven't even set my graphic settings back because it's weird because the lowest settings for the Division 2 look like medium high settings on any game from like this generation, like from, you know, three or four years ago. So I like I'm not even bothered by it, you know, because I just want more frames. But uh, yeah, so uh, Division 2, really interesting place it's in again uh, with the expansion bunch of good things happen and a bunch of bad things happen and the bad things slightly outweigh the good things unfortunately so uh, time will tell if they recover from that um player sentiment when i you know got back into the game was like man i really hope that we just like build upon the division two because looter shooters in the like the faux mmo style of uh the division and destiny and anthem really you know i mean anthem's fucking dead but i'm just saying that for like comparison of like the kind of genre that they find themselves in games like that really don't even need sequels they just need like updates and expansions you know so there's that so division two pretty good uh, i only have one friend that plays it which is annoying uh because you need at least four in a clan to start doing clan stuff <sighs> but whatever I already made my clan, I already invited him to it, but you need four people in it to, like, activate, like, projects and, like, leaderboard and blah, and I don't even know what you can do with clans, because I haven't been able to activate it, you know? <sighs> but there's a lot of cool stuff, um, there's a lot of fucking shit to do in that game, and they're really clever with a lot of their mechanics, and the end game's really cool, and you can find what you're looking for, you know, you know, like, if you know what you want, if you're like, I need a better set of knee pads, or I'm looking for this exotic, you know, I'm looking for this blah, 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 you know, I'm trying to do kind of this stuff, like, you will find exactly where you need to go to do it in the end game, which is really cool. So, they get big fucking brownie points for that, but, uh, yeah, I'm sure, well, like, I, I don't know if I can say I'm sure, but I'm certain, well, that's the same fucking word, dumbass, I, if I'm willing to believe there's a classic phrase of mine i'm willing to believe that uh they'll turn around the negative parts of the expansion and everything will be hunky-dory again but you know as of this uh i i said video early on as of as of this podcast even if it is released as a video as of this podcast the game's in a wonky state it should be made clear uh the division the changes that occurred don't like hurt the base game like the original experience at all as far as i can tell it's literally just like the end game just got a little shittier so only the most hardcore of people are really going to be like negatively impacted by it so if you want to check it out unfortunately the sales over the sale went until a week ago when the expansion came out it was around for like an entire month of february or whatever so the sale is no longer there maybe they'll bring it back though uh you know all i can really say at the end of this is vision 2 uh pretty fucking solid i like it you know pretty pretty cool fun with friends as uh, you would hope it would be you know next up uh well we kind of got a segue into things here's where oh, we're almost done with this part isn't it just exciting oh, i just love talking about video games ad nauseum for no audience <laughs> anyway we kind of have to mix things around here and talk about what's up next as well as what I finished here. So, um, according to the timestamps, I'm way too lazy, apparently, to actually look at the, or listen to the old podcast to know what I talked about. But I did mention Doom Eternal Hype at the end of the last podcast, which means that I may or may not have mentioned something that I will now mention now that I can be ashamed for uh, either way if I mention it be before or not. And that is, uh, I may have may or may not have mentioned a Doom Crusade thing that I was going to do by playing through Doom, Doom 2, Doom 64, you know, Plutonia, TNT Evolution, Doom 3, its expansions, Doom 2016, and then Eternal. Um, <clears throat> but that just didn't happen. You know, it wasn't going to be in that order either if, if somebody was keeping track. I <laughs> I looked up all the release dates. I put them in proper order. Okay, don't, fu don't fuck with me. Anyway, I just got halfway through Doom 2, and um, it just isn't in me to play Doom right now. You know, like, I, I got so hyped about it that I got re-inundated with Doom stuff, and I also had my resurgence into playing, like, a bunch of fucking custom servers in December, so I was already re-inundated with Doom, like, in my veins, you know, at least classic Doom, you know, I, I, uh, 
I'm still going to play Doom 2016 just for Eternal, just for a nice refresher, because it's going to be in that style. But Classic Doom, I just can't, like, stand playing right now, just because, like, I have I had my fill, like, three months ago, and I have these phases where, like, once every two years, I just get into just a month, not a month, maybe, like, a week and a half of just straight, just Doom, just playing a shitload of Doom. And in December, man, I had, like, a week where I just play, like, six hours of uh, custom servers on Doom every day, and it's fucking great, I fucking love Doom, but I just can't, I just can't stand fucking playing Doom right now for some reason, so, I watched all my favorite Doom videos, you know, I did this and that, <sighs> but, <coughs> just can't really bring myself to play right now, and that makes it sound like I don't like it, or that, like, it's a chore, but, you know, you, even your favorite stuff, you just can't really fucking handle sometimes, you know? you can eat your favorite food, you know, everybody can say, at least, I mean, as a kid, you can, you know, your parents tell you, well, if you had that for dinner every night, you wouldn't like it as much, and, uh, you know, you're like, that's fucking bullshit, you stupid whore, I mean, you don't, you don't actually say that, and neither did I, but of course, that's what we're thinking, but, <laughs> um, uh, I'm joking, obviously, but, um, the fact is, you know, your favorite things you can get tired of, so, um, I'm going to replay Doom 2016 very, very, very soon. I'm aiming for the 15th. That's going to be my day to replay it just because, uh, that'll be fun. <clears throat> but the Doom Crusade not happening again. I don't know if I mentioned it at the end of the last podcast or not, but whether or not, um, I did, I wanted to bring it up here just so I can say, Hey guys, here's another failed project that I, uh, was going to do and then didn't just like in 2019 when I was w around January, I'm like, I'm going to fucking a hundred, I'm going to platinum every, uh, devil may cry game before five comes out. And then I did one and I did two and then I got, and then I just kind of stopped at three. I didn't really like, it wasn't too hard for me. I just kind of like lost my momentum and, uh, then five came out and I was kind of reinvigorated, but then I was like, well, do I platinum five since I'm like used to these new mechanics or do I go back to three? And then, you know, when I come back to five after four, you know, I mean, it'll be the evolution of the mechanics again, but I mean, I'm going to forget how I already can play it, you know, and how I'm going to have to relearn how to play V, blah, blah, blah. So five, I got halfway through. So you have to play it on, you get easy and normal and then you get hard, and then you get uh, Dante Must Die difficulty. So I got through normal on my first playthrough, I got through hard, and then I got halfway through uh, Dante Must Die when I just kind of, like, stopped. But, man, you know, if I can kill that shit on Dante Must Die, that'll feel really fucking good. Um, and again, and another thing, I didn't use any fucking... Uh, <sighs> f uh, revives, so that felt good. But, um... Yeah, anyway, I'm just so good at dropping projects, you know, so <clears throat> I have to bring all this up because I mentioned it again um, and at the end of the last podcast. So what are we doing now? Well, uh, we're kind of twiddling our thumbs waiting, and the idea was to play the Division 2 until Doom Eternal because the expansion came out on the 3rd, so I'm like, well, there's no way I can play the, the expansion for more than a week, and then I'll just have time to coast, right? You know, still to this day, haven't finished the expansion. Maybe uh, tomorrow. Ooh. Ah. Delicious. Maybe tomorrow I'll start hitting it hard. Um, but anyway, what am I doing now? Well, the current meme that was set to be done after Eternal. That was like the first thing I wanted to do after Eternal. But anyway, it's been moved up because of my interest. And that's... Uh, I was going to do a drum roll, but I just, I just don't give a shit at this point. Um, <clears throat> Mega Man. Now, how about that? Now, Mega Man is a pretty cool fucking thing. Uh, it's going to be an absolute nightmare trying to timestamp all of this shit out and, like, how I want to, like, lay it out in the description. But anyway, <clears throat> Mega Man is a franchise that I've had a very strange and unorthodox connection to over the years. I, uh, as a child, I'm not going to say I grew up with, but as a child, I had a few of the Battle Network games, uh, one of the Zero games, and one of the X games. Now, these, all of the specific games, I, all these specific Mega Man games I physically own 
are very, like, specific and very, like, have their own place in the Mega Man mythos. And, like, the way I got introduced to the series was a very specific way that I don't know if anybody else ever had. So, <clears throat> I have to explain my history with Mega Man before I explain what the current meme is, okay? So, just follow me along, if you will. Mega Man, traditionally is a series of, like, action platformer games where you jump and shoot, you know, just as Egoraptor mentioned in the Mega Man Sequelitis video, which will play its own part in this whole thing. So, you jump and shoot, and you have a good time, and then you go through a stage, you avoid hazards, and then you fight a boss, and when you fight a boss, you get their weapon, and you can bring it with you to other stages, and potentially, uh... Each boss has a weakness to another boss's weapon, so if you know the cycle, you can start with whatever boss you find easiest with the regular Mega Buster, and then just abuse the weaknesses to just stop everybody, it's, and it's really cool. And then you go through one of Wily's castles, Dr. Wily's castle, and then you fight Wily, and then the game's over. It's pretty simple. And over time, it evolved into having more kind of Metroidvania-ish elements, having more exploration, having more like pickups and like upgrades hidden throughout levels, Got really cool, but the core gameplay was action platforming, jumping and shooting, and skillfully dodging attacks and retaliating at the proper time, you know. However, the games I grew up on were Mega Man Battle Network 3, both versions, and then I got 5 Team Proto Man, and then I got Double Team DS. Now, what's the deal with Battle Network? Well, poof. Battle Network is a little complicated of a game, but to put it simply, it plays more like Pokemon than it plays like regular uh, uh, Mega Man. So I didn't get... It's not an action platformer at all. It has like an overworld that you run around and you can connect into things. I really don't want to go into too much detail about it, but all you need to know is that it has some turn-based stuff to it, some live... T like, l live time? What the fuck? Real, real time action to it as well. Um, and it's totally not anything like the original Mega Man games or like the main gameplay flow at all of Mega Man games. But I really love it and I still stand by that, it th that I really like its style. Um, but after those, <clears throat> I randomly got um, Mega Man Zero 3 for Christmas. Uh, one year, and I distinctly remember like getting it and being like, wow, it's a Mega Man game, because I'm like, hey, I like Mega Man, I like the Battle Network games, and um, I distinctly remember getting it, and then being like super thrilled, and I started playing it on like the car ride home from uh, my grandpa's, because it was a gift from my uh, uh, grandparents, that's the word, huh. gift from my grandparents, and we always went over there for Christmas Eve, and then we'd have like our immediate family Christmas on Christmas, so I was playing it on the car ride home, you know, it's like eight or nine o'clock, you know, it's kind of dark out, so I have to use, you know, the, the passing street lights to light up my Game Boy Advance, because I had one of those original uh, Game Boy Advances, I never got an SP, even though all of my other friends swore by it, I'm like, oh, fuck you, I don't have a backlight, but anyway, uh, yeah, and it was really fucking hard, it was really, really fucking hard, and time and time again, I would, I could beat the intro stage and then I'd get to the main menu where you'd select like one of the next four levels to go to and fuck, I just couldn't do any of them. I think there were, I, I would keep coming back time and time again because I really wanted to love that game. It was just so fucking hard because it played like a traditional Mega Man game. It was an action platformer where you had to skillfully dodge stuff and move quickly and do all this stuff and fight enemies in real time all the time. And, uh... God, I just wasn't ready for that. I played some... I had the uh, Super Mario game for the Game Boy uh, Color growing up, so, you know, I wasn't new to platformers or anything, you know? I think the platformer is arguably the first genre anybody should get into because I think mastering movement is... Uh, probably the first thing you should do in a video game because, you know, actions are cool, but it's also good to be able to, like, know what you can do physically in the game. Anyway... <clears throat> Zero Three fucking kicked my ass, and uh, I always loved and respected it, even if it never wanted to love me in return. You know, it was like I was like I was basically simping for it, to put it bluntly. Um, and there was like one time where I managed to clear a stage and kill a boss, and I was like, "Damn, I finally did it!" And then I never, you know, cleared another stage after that, no matter how many attempts I would 
fire it back up and be like, fuck, I just can't beat any of these motherfucking stages and or bosses. Ah. <sighs> so, <sighs> really hard game. I would find out later that 03, here's a, well, I should go back to Battle Network. I would find out later, Battle Network 3 is considered like the best one in the series of 6, and 5 is kind of good, kind of like, kind of iffy. Some people like it, some people don't like it. I really like it. It's very gamey, but I, I like it. Um, I would find out later, Mega Man 03, if you're based and you know anything about Mega Man, or if you know everything about Mega Man, I should say, Mega Man 03 is one of, if not the best singular Mega Man game in terms of like that classic formula of action platforming. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that at the time, obviously. And then the last game uh, I physically own for Mega Man, and I still have all of these uh, except the disc for this game, and that would be Mega Man X7. Now... What you need to know immediately off the bat is Mega Man X7 is a terrible fucking game. Terrible. It's fucking abysmal. I'm not I'm not being like, well, some people like it and I don't like it, so I'm overplaying how bad No 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 no. This is a genuinely bad game. Worse than Devil May Cry 2. If you've been following me and you're like, man, I should play Devil May Cry now. Uh yeah. It but Mega Man X7, it's worse than Devil May Cry 2 for many reasons. A lot of shoddy uh, level design, really weird choices in terms of like how often voice clips are played. The gameplay just feels super clunky. There's just a lot of terrible problems with it. Oh! <clears throat> and I own it for the PS2. Uh, actually, the disc is missing, and I don't know where it went, because I never, like, did a meme and snapped it or anything. Um, but X7 was a game I got for Christmas um, as well. I don't vividly remember when I got it. I might have just randomly got it from my parents, not with any fanfare. You know, maybe it was just a gift in the middle of somewhere, you know, that wasn't tied to my birthday or Christmas. But, yeah, got it. And uh, just remember thinking the game was really hard. Uh, it did kind of play in the classic action platformer style, but they also try to incorporate, like, three-dimensional shit, which just, like... Ugh, that game's just rife with bad decisions. So, <laughs> ugh. Anyway, um... Yeah, so, like how I didn't know Zero Three was one of the best games, I didn't know X7 was one of, if not the, worst singular Mega Man game. Um, and, uh... When I first got it, I got somewhat into it, and then I just couldn't really get anything done again because it was really hard. There was just a lot of really cheap difficulty in that game. And then later, like way later in high school, because I got all these Mega Man games while I was, I think, still in elementary school, if not like 6th or 7th grade. Later in high school, I had this renaissance where I was like, well, I still never beat this game, and I kind of want to just beat the shit out of it. So uh, then I did. You know, I finally played it. I looked up where to find like all the armor pieces and blah, blah, all that other shit. And I did it, and I was kind of like, wow, you know, I did it. And looking back, it doesn't even feel like it happened. It was such a fucking blur. But um, I think even somewhere at that time, something inside of me like was like, man, this game is not that good, isn't it? This game is kind of bad, uh, you know? But, you know, as a, as a youngin, still, you know, without a critical mind and possibly somewhat new to the industry still, despite playing games since I was born, as far as I know, um you know, I, I I was, I didn't want to be critical of games because I didn't know what a bad game really looked like. That's, that's something I've always grappled with. It's like, well, I don't really know what's bad because I don't really have an idea of how bad things can really be unless they're like the absolute worst possible thing. So I don't, you know, I don't really have any kind of understanding of what bad is other than the absolute worst possible thing it can be, you know? So I had... In summary, still to this day, these are the only physical Mega Man games I own, and I know where all of them are. Mega Man 3, both uh, white and blue versions. Mega Man 5, uh, I'm sorry, Mega Man Battle Network 3. Mega Man Battle Network 5, Team Proto Man for Game Boy Advance. Battle Network 5, Team uh, Double Team DS. Mega Man Zero 3, and Mega Man X7. So... What does this all have to do with any other shit? Well, the next step in this process is around 2013 or 2014, Egoraptor, you may know him as Aaron Hansen from Game Grumps, uh, put out a video called Sequelitis about 
uh, Mega Man Classic versus Mega Man X. Now, it was the third sequelitis video, actually. At the time, there were there was the one about Castlevania 1 to Castlevania 2, and then there was a shorter one about Cas Super Castlevania. <sighs> and then you made the Mega Man to Mega Man X one, and then nothing for, like, three years, and then you made the Zelda one. But anyway... The Mega Man sequelitis video that Egraptor made is the hardest fucking sell for Mega Man X you will ever see, and it's the hardest sell for, like, any game I've ever seen, and uh, it immediately impressed me so much that I decided to get into emulation, and I e ended up emulating a Mega Man X, uh, and I would play it at, high at school during lunch. I went to my German teacher's uh, classroom, and she had a few computers that were just off to the side, because, like, every classroom just has a few computers just extra for no reason, so she, it was really, it was a really fun time. She would play, um, the, uh, I don't know what the, the right name for it is, but The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, uh, on her projector and, and eat her lunch, and I'd just be, you know, listening to that and also just fiddling around playing fucking Mega Man X on the computer, thanks to emulation. It was really fun. I got one of my friends into it, and we just played the shit out of Mega Man, um, 100% in Mega Man X had a fucking blast with it. One of the greatest games ever, fucking hands down. Uh, uh, then I played Mega Man X 2, and I did everything in that. And then I think I maybe started Mega Man X 3, but then I stopped there. Uh, so I've had my like moment to like really embrace Mega Man. But now, it's the real time. So... There's <sighs> a nice yawn for you. I hope you ASMR fans are sticking around for that. <laughs> anyway... Now, what are we doing now? We're doing the we're doing the Mega Man Crusade. So Doom fucking take a step take a seat and a step. Take a steed, you know? Um the plan is so 2013, 2014-ish, I believe the dates might not line up, but they released a Capcom uh cap you I guess it should be also stated. This is like a full crash course at this point. Uh Mega Man as a franchise was kind of dead since like 2009. So, um, when he showed up in Smash in 2013, uh, 14 ish, it was a really big deal because people were like, holy shit, I thought Mega Man was fucking dead. Um, and then there still hasn't really been anything in a while. But around that same time frame, um, Capcom uh, compiled the classic games, the classic line of Mega Man games. We'll get into the lines of Mega Man games in a bit, into. Two collections. So you have one collection, Mega Man 1 through 6, which is all six of the games that came out for NES. Wow! And then uh, Classic Collection 2, which is 7 through 10, which 7 came out on SNES, 8 came out on PlayStation 1, and then 9 and 10 actually came out for the Xbox 360 as retro classic titles. So they're in the vein of actually the first game in terms of like your abilities. And then, uh, in 2018, they put out, they well, it was like a long affair to like announce and everything. They finally create, they revealed and created and put out and everybody loved Mega Man 11. A finally a new classic game that everybody was skeptical of. They were like, I don't know if they can pull it off anymore. And it looked kind of, looked a little weird from the trailers, but they pulled it off and it's a great addition. So... Classic series, fantastic. After that, they made, actually, an X Legacy collection, which people loved even more, because X is, like... Classic is for the boomers. X is, like, here's your badass, like, metal version of Mega Man that's way more edgy, and it's way cooler, and the soundtrack is way more rock and metal-oriented. It's fucking sick, and it's about... Oh, it's about war instead of, like, oh, one guy fighting a bunch of robots. Uh, it's about a fucking war. Anyway, uh, so you have the X Collection 1, which is Mega Man X 1 through 4, which I believe were... Uh, I believe 1 through 3 were on the SNES, and then 4 was on PS1. And then you have... Uh, uh, collection two. I'm sorry. I'm not even looking at this. It sounds like my gaps in speech uh, words. It sounds like my pauses are because I'm looking at something. I'm not. I'm literally just like recalling all this information in from my head right now. Uh, X collection two has uh five, six, seven, eight, five and six on PS one, seven and eight were on PS two. Uh, as far as I know. Um, so that's cool. So you can get. 
you know, the classic set, the classic line and the X line on any console. And just now, in February, last month, they put out the Zero Collection. Ooh. <sighs> they hyped it up. They put out um, a collection that has all four Zero games from uh, Game Boy Advance, as well as the two ZX games for DS. So it's one collection with six games. That's fucking crazy. Um, and I think just seeing that trailer and seeing people be really hyped about it, and also hearing that it's the best one yet, instead of being like emulation, it's actual ports, so there's no input lag, whereas the other collections, the Classic and X collections, have like a very, 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 very minuscule amount of input lag that only really speedrunners can notice, or if you've played the native versions recently. But anyway... Um, just seeing all this hype and support for it, just really, especially the fact that I always really wanted to love Zero Three, but I just didn't have the skill to really grasp it, really made me want to play the Zero games. So I'm like, fuck it, here's our chance to do things right and play through all of the games. So, <clears throat> I am, my trajectory now is, I'm currently playing through the classic games, going to play 1 through 11, all the way through to 11, then I'm going to play X 1 through 8, and then I'm going to play 0, 0, 1 through ZX Advent. That's my that's my plan. That's what my current plan. I'm currently done with 1 through 7 of Classic, so I'm already almost done with the, the Classic set. I, I want to make it clear, with those three fucking series, and, you know, people who have played ZX are like, well, ZX is a different series from 0. It's... Uh, you know, I mean, it is the X to it is the X to zeros classic to be completely fair, but it I mean it's still I mean it's it's like the same style and you know, it's portable Mega Man. Anyway, I lumped them in as one thing because right? maybe when I get there I'll be like it's actually they're way different and they shouldn't be lumped together. But anyway, um, eleven classic games, eight X games, and six zero games. You're looking at fucking twenty five Mega Man games that I'm playing through. And, you know, those first six NES games, there's slight deviations. I've been keeping notes on every little thing that changes so that I can, like, help diversify them in my mind and be like, wow, look at this. Like, for example, this was something that blew my mind. You don't even have the charge shot in the first Mega Man game. Now, I would, be, I would be, I was willing to believe that you didn't have the slide in the first Mega Man game. I was willing to believe that, but you don't even have the fucking charge shot, you know? You don't get the charge shot until the fourth game. Whoa! Anyway, um, I don't even want to talk about 1 through 7 because that's its own thing and I've talked way too long about Mega Man. All I want to talk about now are the different lines of Mega Man series that exist. So, first I want to say there's a bunch of different spinoffs. I'm not even really like going to look at those like at all like i like i'm not even it's not that i'm not bringing them up for the podcast i haven't looked into them at all because they're so fucking many there's a fucking Mega Man soccer game there's you know uh rock man and forte there's fucking the game boy versions of the classic Mega Man games which are really good in their own right surprisingly uh just all that shit i'm not interested in those spinoffs i'm just interested in all the different lines of games so what do you got <clears throat> you have classic Mega Man, which is, you know, pew, 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 eight, you know, 8-bit shit. That's the character that um, the Smash Brothers Mega Man is based off of. And he has a bunch of weapons from uh, those Mega Man games. Um, and they're all really good. Like, the, the baseline of classic is good. Some of them are really good. Some of them are, you know, just, like, pretty good. But, um... There aren't really any mistakes. You're not really gonna like. You're not really gonna have to suffer through any of them to have a good time. So eleven Mega Man games, all all pretty fucking solid. All pretty fun. Uh, all my friends kind of discredit the classic series and say, "I'm just only gonna play X." But I'm glad that I'm taking the time to play through classic because they're they are still genuinely fun. Uh, I'll admit I've been abusing the rewind mechanic for the one through six games because you can, um, and then. The second collection for Legacy has a checkpoint feature that you can reload, so you can just, like, you know, if you die to a boss, you can reload to before you started the boss so you don't actually lose that life, you know, and, oh, that's super cheap, uh, that's its own thing. I don't, you know, I, that was going to be a topic, I don't even, like, care at this point, like, that, I was going to talk about Mike Matei's tweet from Twitter, obviously from Twitter, from December, I mean, 
um, about that. But like, I just, I, it doesn't matter. It's such old news at this point. Like, fuck it. Who cares? Anyway, you've got classic Mega Man. Then you've got X Mega Man, which is a further evolution of the classic series. So it's more badass. It's more hardcore. It's cooler. Ugh. It's super cool. It's I don't I really know. It's the Republic Commando to uh, Battlefront. You know, to compare like Star Wars, it's like you know Battlefront already is, is kind of epic, but uh, you know Republic Commando just has a grit to it. You know, it's the reach to classics Halo Three. You know, um, so you've got the X series one and two are really, really, really fucking good, like, masterpiece tier. Three kind of starts to be uh, iterative and not really do much. Four, not really do much. Five gets kind of wonky, but finally, like, ends the the series in, in an aspect, and then they kept making them because money, right? Six, really weird design, really, lo really lots of weird, stupid thoughts um, that probably shouldn't have seen production. Seven, fucking garbage, god awful eight a little better than garbage like eight is bearable eight is passable seven is fucking garbage eight is like not even as good as like the as like three or four but like it's not as fucking trashy as seven and it's really fast paced so that's cool um zero so x is really funny because as far as i can tell x has the largest variation in quality from like two of the most objectively incredible Mega Man games in X1 and X2 to X7, which is, like, the worst fucking Mega Man game in the entire Mega Man franchise. Like, wow. Anyway. Um, and then you have Mega Man Zero, which is a, an even further development of the X gameplay. So that's cool. So you've got, you know, collectibles around stages and, you know, a little bit of Metroidvania elements. You know, you got upgrades to go grab and stuff to do and revisiting levels and areas to find new stuff. You know, I, I love that shit. Um, and then ZX is like even further evolution, right? So the reason I'm playing them in that order is because it's the further evolution. And also, here's what's really interesting. All of that, Classic X, Zero, ZX, is one timeline. They're all on the same fucking timeline. Um, and it's really weird, because Classic is set up a certain way where uh, Mega Man is built by Dr. Light, and he fights Dr. Wily and his robot masters. And then X is supposed to take place 100 years later, after literally every Classic character has fucking died, and Wily made Zero and uh, Light made Mega Man X to be, like, their their final robots for each of them. And Zero and X end up fighting together. You know, they don't fight um, against each other. But, uh, yeah, so it's 100 years later. And then, like, Zero is another 100 years later, or, like, two or 300 years later after X. Um, and then ZX is another couple hundred years later. It's crazy, but it's all in the same timeline. Um, and it's really interesting because none of those series are done. You know, well, Zero itself is done one through four it's a complete like arc and it has a definitive ending so then zx is its own thing and it has its own story that's opened up um and it was supposed to be a trilogy so zx advent kind of is kind of sucks only because uh it's a lot of exposition and info dumping for a third game that never came you know that kind of sucks um but yeah, so ZX is still open, X is still open, and Classic is still open, which makes it really interesting. Because some people never want Mega Man to get that like final game in each series to like perfectly link up to the next series. Because they all they're all valid at the end of the day, you know? It's not just that like X is better and then Zero's better and then ZX is better. Because people there are people that still obviously prefer Classic the most, you know? So you never really want to get rid of any of the series entirely, but, you know, if for some reason there ever had to be a last Mega Man game in each series, I would be so thrilled to see everything just link up perfectly so, you'd, so you could retrospectively say, okay, play these Mega Man games, play these X games, play these Zero games, etc. You know? So, that's cool. Anyway, that's part of the Crusade. That's, that's the new Mega Man Crusade that I'm doing that really was supposed to happen after Doom Eternal, but I just got so antsy and interested and kind of falling out of the division two that I'm like, I just want to start playing Mega Man now. So I'm going to get somewhere, um, in Mega Man. And then, uh, I'm currently in the middle of eight. So I'm probably going to, uh, I'll find, 
a game to stop on. I might stop on nine. I might stop on ten. They're more nine and ten are throwbacks, so they uh, so they they're just like here's your fucking eight robot masters, and then you go fight Wily instead of weird like mid stage stuff and cutscenes or whatever and upgrades to go find. So maybe I'll stop after eight. Maybe I'll stop after ten. But I will finish a Mega Man game and then play Doom 2016, get that out of my system just before Doom Eternal comes out so I can just be, like, in that zone, you know, just be, like, ooh, ready for that shit to happen, so that'll be good, and then after Doom Eternal, once I'm satisfied with Doom Eternal, I'll return to Mega Man, and let me tell you, it's gonna be hard to make that transition back, but man, oh, I'm just really excited for the X games, if I'm being honest, and then even more excited to play the Zero games, I think the Zero games are what I'm most excited to play, uh, just because I know how good 3 is, and I just know... I've, I, I've already, on the Zero Collection, I've already replayed the intro stage to 3 like four or five times, just because actually when the Zero Collection came out, it had a, a lot of issues where uh, you, you could launch it once, and then if you wanted to relaunch it, it would save your settings in a way that fucked it up so it wouldn't launch properly, so you'd have to delete your entire save file, like single file thing, and uh, change a readme document and just like, yeah, well, it wasn't a readme, but a config. Anyway, that's the Crusade. Classic X, zero, ZX, right? But there are other lines. So there's there's three other lines of Mega Man games, aside from all the fucking spinoffs, which again, I'm not going into. <sighs> so there's three, there's only three things left to really do. To finish, to like, for Capcom to completely redeem itself and say Mega Man's back, motherfuckers. Uh, they need to port the Battle Network collection. Um, that isn't to say that there's already a collection. They need to make a Battle Network collection, which could make, which could be troublesome because that's six games plus possibly Double Team DS, which is a better version of five. Um, but starting with the third Mega Man game, they have two different versions per game. So, you know, it's like Pokemon in that aspect. There's different versions. So it's like, mm, are they going to try and boil it down into one game? Because, like, for the most part, what they do with the two different versions if, is they change color palettes for a lot of things. And, of course, like, there's chips you can use, and you can only get certain chips in certain games. But um, they also change a lot of, like, the color palettes of things to make it feel different. So some things might be red, whereas in the other game they'll be blue or something anyway. Uh, but Double Team DS had a cool thing where you had two different save files, so you could have one for both different versions of the game. Or, you know, if you wanted two save files for the same version, why not, you know? You can do that. That that's your choice. But um, I'm hoping they'll do that for the Legacy Collection. That'll make the most sense. Um, so there's there's that, and then there's Star Force, which is the zero to Battle Networks X. Basically, it's a DS uh, series that evolves the Battle Network gameplay. I haven't heard really good things about Star Force. I'll be completely honest. I've heard pretty average things, but nonetheless, they're like a they're a follow-up to the Battle Network style, and I really like the design of the Mega Man in the Star Force series, so you need that. There's three Star Force games, and I think Star Force 2 has, like, three versions? I don't know what the fuck they were thinking, but, um, yeah, so preferably, even though it's a lot of games, preferably you would bundle Battle Network and Star Force together, preferably, and then the last collection would be Mega Man Legends, which is a 3D, like, third-person adventure game in the state in the style of, like, Legend of Zelda and, like, Mario 64, which is really weird. That's, like, an, like an even weirder thing for Mega Man. Uh, and there were three games on the PS1. Technically, two. There's Mega Man Legends 1, Mega Man Legends 2, and there was supposed to be a third that also never came, so that's another series that Capcom has just left on a fucking cliffhanger, just like ZX. Um, but then there was also a kind of spin-off game within that series that was the same style uh, called The Misadventures of Tron Bon. Tron Bon being uh, the like cartoonish antagonist of... Um, I don't even know if she's the main antagonist, but she's just like a like a little villain uh, within the Mega Man Legends game. So that so I would arguably lump that in there with them because it's the only other game in the Mega Man franchise that's in that same like PS One uh, third person uh, fucking you know, action thing like uh, the Mega Man Legends games are. It has the exact same, like, aesthetic and style and, like, graphical sensibilities. Words, 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 words. Oh, anyway, 
that's like my fucking crash course on Mega Man. Holy shit. I just had so much I wanted to explain. Um, so yeah, uh, it's pretty cool. You know, um, I can feel myself getting better at the games and I'm attempting some of the challenges. That's cool. You know, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm really excited to get to the X games. Cause again, again, I've played X one and two and I know they're just fucking slappers. And, uh, I'm, I never played three, four five and six, but I've seen like let's plays of them. So I know what the gameplay looks like. And it looks interesting. You know, I'm willing to grapple with pretty bad games if there's stuff to do, because then it's like, well, at least, you know, there's a finite amount of, you know, whatever, you know, collecting and upgrading things is a reward unto itself, you know, and uh, now that it's on Steam, it, all these collections are on every platform, by the way, including Switch, so there's no excuse. If you want to get into Mega Man, like, now's your chance. You can play these on anything. Uh, you've got 25 fucking Mega Man games just waiting for you to sink your teeth into, bro. Especially the Zero games, it's especially a big deal because, um... Oh, right, right, right. The thing about remastering stuff that I mentioned in, uh... The Yakuza Kiwami thing I mentioned later on there would be something. So, in the collections for Classic and X, there's fucking... There's, like, action figure models and... Well, not models, but, like, action figures and, like, the packaging and, like... And you can, like, look at the covers of comics and, like, all these, like, different concept art and all this, like, just art in general. Really cool. There's music players for every game. It's fucking awesome. Um... And, like, bonus modes in, uh... There's challenges in Classic. There's this, like, dual boss fight thing in X. And there's this speedrunning mode called Z Chaser in the Zero Collection. It's all fucking crazy. Um, and then in, uh... I don't even know. There's just a bunch of features. I, I just want to mention the ZX games have, um... Particularly ZX Advent. I'm not really sure about the first game, but, uh... ZX Advent has, like, animated cutscenes, like, anime, like, animated cutscenes, and, uh, they were obviously hella compressed back on the DS, but now, uh, they're not. They found the original files for them, so they're, like, super crisp and clean, um, and then also the entirety of ZX Advent is voice acted, and, uh, obviously back then it was super compressed again, but they found all the original files and remastered them, so it's super crisp again, you know, super great. Uh, and then the last thing I want to mention about Zero is that Zero had been exclusive to handhelds up until this point. You could get uh, Zero 1 through 4 were Game Boy Advance games, and then there was a Zero collection for DS, which is mostly what was lifted for the collection now. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, up until this point, you couldn't play the Zero games on console, uh, which sucked because they're genuinely good games, and again, it's the evol it's the further evolution of the X gameplay, which is a further evolution of the classic gameplay. You know, so <sighs> it's just really cool, and I'm glad to be kind of be on this momentum that Capcom's doing. Cause goddamn, if slash when they release those Battle Network collections, I'm gonna be so moist. It's gonna just oh. <sighs> I cannot wait, dude. <sighs> I played through... I only ever managed to finish the Battle Network 5 games. In Battle Network 3, both versions, I got stuck in the same spot because I couldn't solve a puzzle properly, and I was too way too stubborn to look up a guide because what's the fucking point, right? But man, oh, there's chips to collect. There's, like, endgame bosses. There's ex there's post-game exploration. It's like, fuck, bleh, there's so much to do in those games. I was fucking want those, like, crack. But anyway... <clears throat> yeah, dude, that's the big fucking Mega Man meme. The Mega Mega meme. Mega Mega Man meme. Mega Mega Man Mega meme. Mega Mind. Words. Funny. Haha. -ha. Anyway. <sighs> How many times more can I say anyway? That's going to become like the, the meme of this podcast, I think. Just fucking saying anyway. <sighs> <sighs> Alright, so... I guess the only other thing I want to fucking mention is, uh, <laughs> I busted a nut on my guitar. Now, if you'd stop laughing, uh, the musicians in the audience may recognize what I mean. So, 
the <clears throat> on a guitar you've got the the you've got the fucking body and you've got the headstock you know up top the strings go across the neck and then they they go th- they run through a nut at the end like at the base of the headstock and then into like the things that hold the the strings the tuners right um and i was taking i was changing my strings and i fucking just popped part of the fucking nut off uh which is not good so i had to replace it and um you know, it's been a fucking nightmare trying to do that. I did, in fact, order my replacement nut, but I had to sand it down because it was a little too big to fit in the spot I needed it to, and it was such a frustrating thing. I couldn't get it to fit in there, and then at some point, I I guess I fucking sanded it down too much. Uh, it would still fit in there with, like, glue and whatever, but now it won't fit, like, snug by itself, which is, like kind of should, you know, it's not to say that, like, well, I can jury rig it to be fine, you know, it'll, it will be fine when I glue it in there, but it's still frustrating that, like, in between trying to make it fit, I did, in fact, uh, sand it down too much, so, it, God, it was really fucking annoying, though, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on sandpaper, ugh, good old manual labor, it's good for you, it builds character, you know, but, yeah, so, that hasn't been fun. I literally just haven't been able to play guitar for like a month now. Uh, I finally got desperate enough that I'm borrowing my dad's seven string and just hooking it into a different amp. So it's not exactly the same experience, but uh, you know, I just had to, my hands just had to sing a bit, you know? So that was funny, but it kind of made me frustrated. I think that was a prime catalyst when I kind of had my (coughs) coronavirus based, like epiphany, my crystallizing moment where I was just like, man, there might be a chance that I might literally never play guitar again because I can't, you know, I don't want to order anything from Amazon because uh, it can live on surfaces for super long and all this other shit, right? I don't want to go out anywhere. I don't want to go to Guitar Center and say, hey, you know what? Just here's fucking 30 bucks. Put this nut in this guitar for me. Thanks. You know, like, uh, God, I just like, it's not worth the fucking manual effort at this point, but yeah. Anyway, I don't want to talk too much about it, and I'm really hoping by the next one uh, I won't have to make any kind of update on the coronavirus, because fuck it, you know, I hate it. Um, (sighs) Yeah, living is certainly a thing, isn't it? (sighs) There are other topics to talk about, but I don't really have the fire to talk about those. I watched this... Uh, let's see the fucking details here, actually. I watched a... Let's see how many... uh, This 23-minute video by Neryl, uh, N-E-R-R-E-L, about emulation, the law, and you, where the hobby ends and crime begins. That kind of just... It like the first half is about like the the criminality of it, but then the second half is more about like the 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 legitimacy of emulation and for like preservation. And he brings up like you know the shitty arguments, you know, not in favor of them, but like basically saying look at these bad arguments for it, and then you know destroying them. And I just got really just stuck in this headspace of like God, how can people not value you know preserving games? These stupid motherfuckers. <sighs> but yeah. So I've already kind of like blown my hard, my hard brain think nut, uh, tonight, so to speak, just like my guitar. Ha! Huh? But yeah, I'm just feeling pretty wiped out. I'm glad I could do this. It's now 5 17 AM. So I don't really have that much time left to do stuff, but yeah, you know, it's just a fucking crazy time we live in. And I'd love for this all to be over in about two months, but, uh, you know, the coronavirus has already had such an effect on, uh, the world already with all of the, like, factories being shut down and all the workers not able to work, so products aren't getting out and, you know, stuff needs to get shipped around to to be worked on, yada yada, the stock market's starting to take a little bit of a downturn, you know, things are looking really fucking, uh... Uh, is this the word I want to use? Hold on, let me, uh, is this the word I want to use? Is this the word I want to use? Uh, trepidatious. Yes, indeed. Things are looking quite trepidatious. So, uh, 
yeah, you know, <laughs> we're going to see what things are like uh, next month. I ho- God, I really hope to not have to bring it up every month, but I probably will anyway because it's going to affect me in some way because, like, <clears throat> these days... Like, in the past four or five days, I've kind of gotten over it, and I'm kind of just like, well, you know, if it happens, it happens. Uh, You know, I don't really have much I can do, because I don't leave the house much in general right now. So, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not, like, stressing about it. I'm not freaking out about it. It's not keeping me up at night. It's just kind of like something I'm reminded of, I'm like... Hmm, it is kind of getting worse. The The daily amount of cases and the daily amount of deaths are going up slightly each day. It's not like it's staying the same on average. It is slightly going up, so that's not really that exciting. Uh, anyway, I think I'm going to sign off now. Like I said, I had other things I could talk about, but you know, I just... I just kind of feel done with this one. You know, I, I blew my big fucking mega nut... And uh, that's probably going to be, like, the big draw of this episode, even though it's, like, thinking back on it, it's just a total mess in terms of, like, how it was explained and described. But I think I got everything I wanted in there. You know, I went over every little line of each game. And, uh, yeah, Mega Man's cool. Uh, If you want the absolute bare essentials, definitely play X1, maybe X2. And then check out the Zero games if you want the fucking bare essentials. But if you want, like, the super big, uh, fucking big nut, coom, coomer, ah, I'm cooming thing, do what I'm doing and play all 25 of them. Because that's based. (laughs) So, yeah. Uh, thanks for listening. As always, you can find me in my Discord server. There's a link in the description. Uh, It's the only place I link to on any of my anythings on the internet because I would like people to go there. There's a handy-dandy database channel there where you can find a list of every other place I am on the internet uh, that I would would like to link back to my Discord. (laughs) Anyway, yeah, so... Take care of yourself. Uh, Take the coronavirus very seriously, even if there aren't even any cases in your state yet. Just don't leave the house as much as you can and take it seriously. There's no reason to freak out about it, but just be aware it's a big deal. Uh, It'll fuck you up if you get it, uh, and you don't want to fucking get it, trust me. So, yeah. Take care of yourself. I don't want anybody's life to be cut short by some vicious disease with very questionable origins. (laughs) That's all I'll say, right? So, yeah. Thanks for listening. Take care of yourself. And uh, happy uh, gaming and anime watching, you know?